Hi everyone, this is Ahlam al Amri from the General Directorate of Infection Prevention and Control at Ministry of Health. Today, inshallah, we'll explore the main component in the Canada Oral Prevention Strategies CAPS National Project, which is related to the role of environmental cleaning and disinfection against Canada Oral. So let's start together. Our outlines for this session will be uh, give you first of all a background and introduction about the Canada Oris, and then we'll explore the significant role of environmental cleaning and disinfection on Canada Oris, and we'll discuss the basic concept and the most common terms that we are facing uh, when we are searching in the uh, reference or the uh, guidelines that relate to the environmental cleaning and disinfection, and we'll explore the type and selection of disinfectant required for the cleaning and disinfection of the environment that occupied by colonized or infected Canada or its patient and their related equipments required for these activities. And as well as we'll explain or discuss the cleaning methods and measures and the monitoring um, and how we are providing the feedback regarding the observed or noted uh, cleaning and disinfection um, uh, observations. Finally, we'll give you a brief overview and conclusion. There is an increasing evidence that the healthcare environment is an important source of many of healthcare associated infections and particularly the multidrug resistant organisms. And every healthcare facility must have truly clean and disinfect their environment in order to breaking down the chain of infection and prevent it from developing into a reservoir for a specific pathogens. Candida aureus is a healthcare associated pathogenic organism that can cause a significant uh, morbidity and mortality and increasing the length of stay of our patient in the hospital and different various negative consequences and among our infected individual and is often multi-drug resistant and have a resistant to a different antifungal agent and patients with candida auris can be colonized without showing any signs and symptoms and here there will be a silent um, um, source of infection because here we don't have any signs and symptoms and all the required infection prevention and control measures are not implemented based on that and the patient will spread the infection easily and it can be um, infected with showing a severe signs and symptoms both colonized and infected patient can spread can ours directly or indirectly directly from the direct contact by providing the direct care to our patients and indirectly from the contaminated objects and contaminated environment and surfaces candida auris uh, is persist and can remain on the environment and surfaces for weeks, months, and sometimes two years. After the brief introduction and background, we have to ask ourselves, does the environmental cleaning and disinfection have a significant role against this sober bug, which is the canned aurus? So let's explore the research and evidence to answer this question. After exploring the evidence, uh, this is one article um, and literature review regarding candida ores, which is published in 2018 January. So the, the study is showing that the, uh, the ability uh, of this sober pug candida ores to stay on surfaces in different uh, material surfaces such as glass, plastic, and so on. And for a long period of time, that would lead to the um, increase the colonization rate and the transmission of this infection. The study showing that, that the candida aureus has been demonstrated to survive on a range of different surfaces types, including dry, moist, and plastic surfaces, with organism being viable for up to 14 days on plastic. And the rate of recovery of candida aureus over a period of seven days was higher than that of candida albicans on both moist and dry surfaces, indicating that the important and the potential significance of environmental contamination, and that's why the environmental cleaning and disinfection measures consider a gold intervention in breaking down the chain of colonization. For further reading of the attached or the previous uh, explained literature review, you can go through this link and have 
more reading about the topic. Another question that we have to ask ourselves, how does the candorous infection or colonization spread? Usually the routes and modes of transmission of candorous varies. It can be through a direct or indirect transmission from the contaminated equipment, contaminated surfaces, or contaminated hands of healthcare workers. When you are reading the evidence or guidelines or the textbooks relating to the environmental cleaning and disinfection, we are facing basic or most common concepts and terms that we have known as infection prevention and control practitioners or as a healthcare workers professionals. So the cleaning, which is the first uh, activity that we have to perform before the disinfection. Cleaning is the physical removal of foreign material such as dust, soil, and organic material such as blood, excretion, excretion, and microorganism. While disinfection is describes a process that eliminates many or all pathogenic microorganisms except the bacterial spores. Routine cleaning, that means we have two types of cleaning here, the thermal cleaning and regular cleaning. The regular cleaning and disinfection when indicated when the room is occupied to remove organic material and reduce the microbial contamination and provide a visually clean environment. Emphasis is on surfaces within the patient zone or high touch surfaces. The terminal or discharge cleaning is explained the process that we have to perform a cleaning and disinfection after the patient is discharged or transfer or la samahallah expired. Include the removal of organic material and significant reduction and elimination of microbial contamination. Another term that we have to explain, which is the term disinfectant. Disinfectant are the chemical compounds that inactivate or kill pathogens and other microbes. And we cannot perform the disinfection activities unless we are performing a detergent or cleaning activity. Cleaning activity can be performed by using detergent, which is the synthetic cleansing agent that can emulsify and suspend oil. Contains a surfactant or a mixture of surfactants with a cleaning properties in dilute solution to lower surface tension and aid in removal of organic soil and oils, fats, and greases. So from the previous slides, I mentioned that the importance of performing cleaning activities before any disinfection activities. So cleaning is the first step prior any disinfection or sterilization measures. And why? Because that the disinfectant indication for use is to inactivate or kill the microorganism on the surfaces. And we cannot reach the microorganism unless we are removing all the layers from the soil, dust, and organic soil from the surfaces in order to use uh, the disinfectant directly on the microorganism. And we cannot remove all these soil and dust or organi organic materials unless we are performing the cleaning first and then we will use the disinfection in order to kill the microorganism effectively. Another term that we have to explain is the contact time. By using the effective or accurate contact time, the disinfection activities, it will perform accurately. So the contact time is the time that a disinfectant must be in contact with a surface or device to ensure that the appropriate disinfection measures has occurred. So material safety data sheet is another term or it's called MSDS and we cannot use any disinfectant unless we have the MSDS available there. So it's a document by the supplier or manufacturer of a chemical product that contain information on the product's potential hazards such as health, fire reactivity and environmental and how to work safely with it. And it also contains information on the use, storage, dilution required, handling, and emergency procedure, as well as the contact time. This is an example of how it's looked like the MSTS or the material safety data sheet. And from the sheet here, you can find all the information that we are explained from the previous slide. It's really important to know how to read the label that is attached to the disinfectant bottle or the product. So this slide showing for you how we are reading or giving you a guide how to read all the information required on the label that on attached on the disinfectant, such as the active ingredients used, the ABA registration number, the direction for use, which is called the manufacturer instruction for use, this, uh, the signal award, such as the caution that required 
when you are using the disinfectant or exposed to the chemicals, the precautionary statement, the first aid required, and also the method for storage and disposal. What are the type of surfaces? Are we are considering all the surfaces the same? Actually, the answer is not. So we have two types of surfaces in the healthcare facilities, high touch surfaces and low touch surfaces. The high touch surfaces defined to those with frequent hand contact, such as the bed rail scalpel of the patient bed. The low touch surfaces defined as those with minimal hand contact, such as the ceiling and floors. From this graph, you can um, see the arrows of the red color, which is indicating the high touch surfaces or items, and the green arrows, which is indicating for the low touch surfaces. And here we have to keep consideration and put in our mind the significant and importance of performing the cleaning and disinfection effectively and frequently on the high touch surfaces, and particularly with candorous organism, in order to avoid the transmission of disinfection. We explained in the previous slides the two types of the surfaces, which is the high touch surfaces and low touch surfaces. The curtains here is the most common used um, product or a barrier uh, for the patient in their uh, rooms in the healthcare facilities. So using the privacy curtains vary by the patient. And these curtains are often a high touch item. So we have to consider it when we are talking about the environmental cleaning and disinfection. So the privacy curtain for the patient under a contact isolation um, such as the candida or patient colonized or infectant should be changed and cleaned on a routine schedule and when visibly soiled and after patient discharge or transferred or expired. So let's talk about the type and the method for selection of disinfectant and supplies and equipment for cleaning and disinfection. Product evaluation. So we are talking about the disinfectants required for using for a cleaning and disinfection of the surfaces or in the environment of the canned or patient colonized or infected, we have to consider the evaluation of the product from the beginning. So uh, the product evaluation should be, should be um, performed by the Structured Product Evaluation Committee. And they have uh, a significant role and impact on the patient care and contribute directly to providing a safe and quality of care to our patients. The Product Evaluation Committee are responsible for reviewing, evaluating, and selecting the best products against evidence for use within the healthcare facilities based on the best evidence recommendation for these products. And they can follow the guidelines, the national guidelines that are approved and disseminated by the GDIBC in order to find out the required disinfectant for each level of disinfectant for a specific organism. Also for the cleaning and disinfection uh, activities, we need to uh, perform it through using the accurate or appropriate supplies and equipment. So selecting the products or supplies and equipment is significant in performing environmental cleaning and disinfection. Each microorganism have a specific disinfection activity. So from this graph, you can see or have a look for the disinfectant hierarchy. We have three uh, types or three levels of disinfection. High level disinfection, which have the efficacy uh, all over the microorganism plus the spores. Mid level disinfection, they have are uh, covering all the microorganism except the spores. And low level disinfectant, they are covering some of microorganism. So this slide show you the level of disinfection, which is divided to high level, intermediate level, and low level. The high level disinfection that chemicals poses a sporicidal activity, so it's killing or eradication the spores. Only with extended exposure time are high level disinfection capable of killing high number of bacteria spores in laboratory tests. So the high level disinfection used mainly for the microorganism that producing spores. Now the intermediate level disinfection is the type of chemicals that can exhibit some sporocidal activity and others um, have no demonstrable sporocidal activity. While the low level disinfection, they have only an efficacy on, um, on some microorganisms and they don't have any sporocidal activity. This slide shows you the active ingredients for each 
chemical disinfectant and their spectrum of activity and their level of disinfection. For example, quaternary ammonium, it's considered a spectrum of activity bactericidal and fungicidal, but they don't have any sporocidal activity. So it's considered as a low level disinfection and it's not used for the patient or the surfaces or environment with candorous. While the high level sporocidal um, such as the hypochlorite at 5,000 ppm and, and above, and hydrogen peroxide from 4 to 5% and above, they are considered a bactericidal, fungicidal, virucidal, and sporocidal, and mycobactericidal. So it's used for the patient or this type of disinfectant or chemical disinfectant used for the patient or the surfaces or environment contaminated with candida ors. In the healthcare facilities, we are using only the approved EPA or Environmental Protection Agency chemical disinfectant. So, um, as the healthcare facilities, if we need any further information about um, registered uh, chemical disinfectant, we can find out that through using uh, the website of the EPA. The EPA is responsible for protecting the people and the environment from any significant health risk, and they are also responsible for developing and enforcing the environmental regulations. So if we have any microorganism and we want to find out what are the type of disinfectant um, uh, for that uh, microorganism, we can go direct to the EBA and uh, find uh, that uh, through typing the type of chemical disinfectant required, for example, against Candida auris, we will find a list of registered EBA disinfectant that we can use it in the healthcare facilities safely. So all the products or the disinfectant that use in the healthcare facilities, uh, it all uh, approved must be approved from the Ministry of Health, particularly from the Environmental Services and the Infection Prevention and Control Directorate. And all these um, uh, products or equipment must be compatible with the services or equipment that use on. And we have to follow the manufacturer instruction regarding the dilution, the temperature, the water hardness, and the most significant one is the contact time. So we have to keep it on surfaces for a specific contact time based on the manufacturer instruction in order to uh, achieve the uh, disinfection activity. And it also must be used according to the product safety data sheet or the MSTS, as well as must be dedicated for the hospital use or the healthcare facility use. Always we are hearing this question regarding the responsibilities of cleaning and disinfection activities. Actually, the housekeeper um, they are responsible for decontamination of the environment, mainly low touch surfaces. But the high touch surfaces uh, must be uh, decontaminated or cleaning and disinfected by the nursing staff. Uh, particularly of the reusable clinical equipments and the monitors and equipments that are around or attached to the patient. And it must be, uh, and the nursing staff, they are also responsible for disposing of single use equipment appropriately based on the medical waste regulation. The patient under contact isolation, particularly infected or colonized with candida auris, are usually in the single room. Um, and always the, the staff there or the housekeepers responsible for cleaning and disinfection, they must be trained about the appropriate use and uh, disposing or the donning and doffing of the required personal protective equipment appropriately. And also they have to uh, be uh, trained and educated about the uh, accurate and uh, hand hygiene uh, techniques for the hand rubbing and hand washing because it's really significant to avoid the transmission of the candida auris through the contaminated hands of the healthcare workers. The equipment used for cleaning and disinfection such as the cleaning carts and trolleys um, provide several benefits such as the ability to carry and safely manage all the essential cleaning supplies and equipment and increase the occupational safety for cleaning staff or housekeepers. Because by using them appropriately and avoiding storing the food and the, the meals uh, in that trolley and used only for its purposes, actually it saves the housekeepers and the environment from any risk of infection. We have a specific factors that impacting on the effectiveness of cleaning and disinfection process, such as the type of cleaning and disinfection product. If we are using, for example, the low-level disinfectant, it will really be wasting of our resources and it will really it's not targeting the 
this type of microorganism, which is the candorus. Candorus needs the sporocidal activity, so we need to use high level disinfection. So, the type of the cleaning or disinfection product that's used is really significant if we want to ensure the effectiveness of disinfection measures. The contact time is also a gold. Um, component or factor that impacting on the effectiveness of the cleaning and disinfection. The concentration of the disinfection and the dilution required. The technique and methods of cleaning measures, and we will explain it later on in the other slide. The equipment used in the cleaning and disinfection process, such as the microfiber towel, the mops, all these equipments also, the quality of these equipments also um, impacting uh, in the process of the cleaning and disinfection. The physical and chemical factors such as the temperature, the water hardness, and pH. Our patient colonized or infected are always placed under contact isolation. So even for the housekeepers, they have to follow the same required PPE when they are entering for performing any cleaning and disinfection inside this patient room. So the PPE required for the contact isolation is the gown and the gloves and uh, plus standard precaution as required and they have to maintain uh, the appropriate sequence of hand hygiene hand rubbing or hand washing effectively in order to avoid transmission of candors another main um, component that we are need to talk about today is the cleaning methods and measures so let's explore the, the main methods required for effective cleaning and disinfection Candors can persist on surfaces in healthcare environment, include both high touch surfaces such as the bedside rails and the tables, as well as the surfaces further away from the patient, such as the window cell, which is considered a low touch surface. So we have to consider effective cleaning and disinfection to avoid the maintaining and to, uh, to ensure the eradication of candida or colonization. There are two types of cleanings: routine cleaning and terminal cleaning. Routine cleaning is a daily cleaning and frequently as required cleaning. And thermal cleaning is the in deep cleaning that is performed upon the patient discharge or transfer or expired. Routine cleaning is at least performed daily or when required. And thermal cleaning and disinfection of patient is performed while the patient discharge or transferred or expired. So all the the area that the patient have receiving a care in, such as Radiology, the physical therapy should be implemented, the cleaning and disinfection effectively in order to avoid the colonization of canned ores in their surfaces. Performing cleaning and disinfection activities required a specific logs or checklists or posters that can be help or support the housekeeping by performing their activities effectively. And in this slide, we are showing for you the checklist for the terminal cleaning in order to follow the, all the high touch surfaces area that in the surfaces or the room of the patient that colonized or affected with candors and then the low touch surfaces area in order to ensure that we are covering all the surfaces that around the patient and in the room of the patient that it could be colonized with the candors. Using the approved MOH disinfectant as a high level disinfectant for uh, avoiding the transmission or eradication of the transmission of candors is really significant, such as the sodium hypochlorite, 1000 ppm, or hydrogen peroxide, 4 or 5 or 6 percent and above. So it's really significant to follow also the manufacturer instruction regarding of using of these disinfectant. And for further information, you can refer to the approved national guidelines that related to the best guidance for selecting, evaluating, and monitoring of infection prevention and control supplies and equipment in our website. And you can find a further information regarding of the list of the approved disinfectants and their related NIPCO and MOH code. When I'm performing also the cleaning um, and disinfection activities, we need to follow a specific methods in order to be systematic in our process. So first of all, we have to conduct a visual site assessment in the patient room, and then we have to proceed from the cleaner to the dirtier, and it can be also proceed from the high to the low or top to the bottom, and also it can be proceed in the methodical systematic manner in order to ensure the effective cleaning and disinfection activities or process have been implemented. 
And this graph show you how it's really important to implement the systematic manner of cleaning and disinfection to ensure the effective cleaning and disinfection have taken place. Due to the advancement in technologies, also we have a new and evolving technologies that help us and support us support us in the disinfection and eradication of the multidrug resistant organism in the healthcare facilities environment. So using the disinfection by using the ultraviolet light machine or disinfection using the hydrogen peroxide vapor or mist machine is really approved in the evidence that it's eradicate the candida or colonization and other multidrug resistant organism that it's a main issue and threaten the and impose the risk to the healthcare facilities. So let's explain further the ultraviolet germicide radiation or UVGI. The UVGI or the ultraviolet germicidal radiation is the use of ultraviolet energy to kill or inactivate the viral or bacterial or fungal species and particularly their DNA structure. So the UV spectrum is commonly divided into UVA, which is the wavelength of 400 nanometer to 315 nanometer. UVB, which is ranged from 315 nanometer to 280 nanometer, and finally UVC, which is the third type, which is uh, the wavelength is between 280 nanometer to 200 nanometer. And the entire UV spectrum can kill or activate many microorganisms, but the UVC energy provides the most germicidal effective based on, in, on evidence, with 265 nanometer being the optimum wavelength. Another technology is that it's about the hydrogen peroxide vapor or mist machine, it's really, or cold fumigation machine, it's really documented in the literature. So the literature contains several accounts for its properties, their germicidal effectiveness, and potential uses for stabilized hydrogen peroxide in the healthcare setting. Published report described the good germicidal activity to the hydrogen peroxide and attest to its bactericidal, virucidal, sporocidal, and fungicidal properties of this uh, disinfectant and particularly if using in the machine such as the fumigation machine. In each healthcare facility, they have a specific policy or document that taking place in order to ensure the effective cleaning and disinfection implemented appropriately. So every healthcare facility must have a written policies and procedure for cleaning and disinfection and all healthcare workers must be oriented about it. The specific supplies and equipment needed for cleaning and disinfection must be available and accessible for healthcare workers and how to use it efficiently. The preparatory steps and the between steps and final steps must be followed when you are performing the cleaning and disinfection appropriately, such as the hand hygiene and the donning of the required BBE, the step-by-step -step instruction on the cleaning process, and the final steps, including the collection of soiled cleaning supplies for reprocessing or disposal, safe removal or doffing PPE, and finally the hand hygiene to avoid the transmission of infection. Another documents and logs must be available in, in to ensure the cleaning and disinfection methods are implemented effectively. So cleaning logs uh, is considered as a job aid that can help guide the daily workflow for the cleaning staff or housekeeper and providing a specific information such as the location room or ward, the cleaning session, exam routine cleaning or thermal cleaning, the date and name signature of the cleaning staff and the disinfectant used and their dilution. And also the cleaning job aids such as the poster, pictures, guide and other visual reminders for the clean cleaning staffs. All these um, documents must be considered the literacy level of the housekeepers in order to ensure their understanding and their implementation. One of our outlines for today's session is about the monitoring and feedback for the cleaning and disinfection activities. Another outline for today's session is about the monitoring and providing the on-site feedback and audit elements. And it's, it's really important to have a regular um, uh, providing a feedback and monitoring comments and in order to improve the practices of environmental cleaning and disinfection. And it can be through the direct monitoring or on-site uh, providing a feedback or it can be through providing a regular reports or KBIs to the departments. 
We have a specific measures for uh, monitoring the quality of cleaning and disinfection, such as the visual assessment, environmental cleaning performance observation, environmental marking, and adenosine triphosphate or ATB. All these uh, measures will explain it in further in the next slide. There are different types or methods for the monitoring the quality of cleaning and disinfection. Uh, we'll start first with the visual assessment, which can be conducted by the trained observer, such as the trained infection control personnel. And according to him, he can assess the cleanliness of the area following the cleaning. And they have a specific advantage and disadvantage for this approach. Another method is environmental cleaning performance observation. In this method, the environmental su surface supervisor observes the environmental surface workers performing their cleaning activities and note any observation. And they have a specific advantage and disadvantage. And also another method um, it's considered as the environmental marking, and we'll explain it in the next slide. And also the ATB or adenosine triphosphate, we'll explain it in further in the next slide following this slide. In this activity, the trace we are using the tracing agent as it's shown here in the slide, and this is regardless of the brand used, it's the same technique. So a tracing agent is considered as a fluorescent material or chemical tracer marks the predetermined items and surfaces before cleaning activities. And after the cleaning, a trained observer use a detecting agent or light, such as the ultraviolet light or enzymatic detector, in order to determine any tracing agent is left. And based on that uh, noted uh, lift, any lift marking uh, in the surfaces, that means the cleaning and disinfection is not appropriately implemented. Another method for the, uh, monitoring the quality of cleaning and disinfection is the ATB or adenosine triphosphate. The ATB is a substance present in all living cells and some organic materials and give us the indicator that the area is contaminated with the organism, including the food and body fluids as the presence of ATB on the surfaces indicate the organic materials remain on the surface and not clean appropriately. Using all the previous explained approaches for the quality monitoring is all about providing a feedback and communication about the effectiveness of cleaning and disinfection to the departments. So provide the multiple types of direct feedback to the cleaning staff, which is including real-time feedback and coaching during the following uh, or following the performance observation. So while I'm observing the cleaning and disinfection in the area, I can provide a direct feedback and comment in, in order to correct the practices that implemented. Regular verbal debrief monthly, for example, usually during the one-on-one -on -one meeting between the cleaning staff and their direct supervisor. And also another method or approach can be through the performance review, written or verbal, usually on an annual basis, and by using a specific KBIs in order to ensure that the cleaning and disinfection or the environment not is the main source or reservoir of transmission of infection in healthcare facilities. So it's really important as the healthcare environment contains a diverse population of microorganisms and can be a reservoir for potential pathogens. So it's really important to understand the interaction of pathogens with the potential environmental reservoir is really crucial to the control of pathogenic disease of candorus. So collaborative approaches between the infection prevention and control department, environmental services staff, and other healthcare workers in the healthcare facilities limit the role of the healthcare environment in disease transmission of deceased. So finally, Candida Aurus prevention strategies um, is the national project that cannot be successful without the collaborative efforts of the healthcare workers and particularly infection prevention and control pioneers. So together we can fight and defeat Candida Aurus. For further elaboration and reading, you can go for these uh, references that I use for today's lectures. And if you have any question at any time, do not hesitate to contact us. If you would like to access to the uh, previous uh, mentioned guidelines, and particularly the national approved guidelines related to the uh, environmental cleaning and disinfection and other related infection prevention and control measures, you can scan this barcode to visit the GDIBC website, and also you can email us through the email that posted on this slide. Thank you so much for listening to this uh, session, and if you have any question at any time, please do not hesitate to contact us. 
and also uh, finally i would like to remind you that together uh, toward caps